Well, welcome to the podcast. My name is Jeff, and I'll be your host today. And uh, our guest today is a good friend of mine, Lydia Morgan from the Jerusalem Institute of Justice. Uh, Lydia is the chief operations officer there. And uh, JIJ is a leading NGO based in Jerusalem, Israel, that operates both domestically and internationally to understand the burdens of humanity and advocate on behalf of people in need. Uh, they seek to expose injustice and speak out for those who've, whose voices have been silenced and work to promote human rights, defend democracy, and improve the overall quality of life in Israel and the Middle East. We are thrilled to be able to partner with JIJ on a number of their humanitarian projects. And so it's a real treat to have you on the podcast today, Lydia, welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, all of us at the Jerusalem Institute of Justice are really proud to have you and uh, Sharon and First Century Foundations as our partners. And we appreciate your support and uh, particularly with our events for Holocaust survivors and lone soldiers throughout the year. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. It is our privilege. And uh, while we're sort of on the subject of, of Jerusalem Institute of Justice and, and what it's all about, uh, talk to us just a little bit about that. And when was it founded? Why was it founded? And um, just reflect a little bit on, on the work that uh, gets accomplished there. Sure, happy to. So uh, Jerusalem Institute of Justice, or JIJ as we are also known, was founded in 2004. As you are probably aware, Israel is uh, the homeland of the Jewish people. Um, it has a Jewish majority. However, all religions under the Declaration of Independence of Israel, uh, all religions are protected. And JIJ strengthens Israel democracy by, by uh, defending other religions, Christian, Christian minorities in particular, uh, many times face bureaucratic um, red tape that they shouldn't and don't uh, sometimes receive their, their rights in a timely manner. And that's when Jerusalem Institute of Justice steps in and uh, really goes to bat for them. Everything we do is free. It's pro bono. We are donation uh, supported and do not charge a shekel for the work that we do. Uh, we represent congregations and um, very proud to do so. On the other hand, we are very Zionistic and strongly believe, as I said, in Israel as the homeland for the Jewish people. And we defend Israel's right to exist. And uh, we do that at the International Criminal Court. We do that uh, at the UN. And um, yeah, we've got lots of different projects and Happy to talk about it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, we are always uh, so thrilled and interested when we receive some of the updates from JIJ, particularly some of this work that you're doing advocating for justice in Israel and the Middle East. And uh, talk about maybe a couple of examples that sort of stand out in your mind of, of successes in terms of, of that kind of advocacy. On behalf of Israel? On behalf of Isra Israel, on behalf of uh, others who, uh, you know, require justice in Israel? Sure. So one of our biggest successes, and I'm just so proud of it, is uh, our Project NOAH, which stands for Not Objects Anymore. And uh, you may not be aware, and, and for many people uh they view israel as the holy land so it's very hard to think that prostitution um occurs here and it took jij 10 years and we worked with a coalition of other organizations but we were able to change the law and now the purchase of sex in israel is illegal for the first time since tamar since rahab since uh, the Old Testament, for the first time in Israel, the purchase of sex is illegal. And that was a huge accomplishment for us. And, um, you know, the, the law that we adopted, uh, it's called the Nordic Model, and it uh, views the prostitutes as, as uh, victims. 
and we come alongside and we assist them with rehabilitation and we work with the government to um for funding for halfway homes for job training for um uh, just therapy you know and um yeah. we also we have uh sponsored education for the police because it's a it's a whole new di dynamic when you enter a situation where there's a prostitute and a john and and how do you deal with that there there's sensitivity that is involved right. now it's not just send everybody to jail you know it's um we criminalize the the purchaser so another yeah. uh example did you have questions about that uh, you know, and I'll just pause there because I, I did want to mention, uh, you know, you talked about the fact that a lot of people aren't really aware that, you know, this kind of thing happens in Israel. Although if you if you think about human nature and society for any length of time, you sort of, I think, have to come back around to a conclusion like that. But but I was shocked. I was surprised the first time I, I went and visited. And I'm thinking of of the area in Tel Aviv around, uh, you know, where the old bus station was. And uh, I was uh, really shocked to see all the all the open doorways and and all of the you know the the women who were who were there in the in the middle of the day um you know broad daylight that were standing out and kind of waiting for people to come along and and the more i shared with some of the ministry leaders that we were uh visiting with that day they they said to me you know that this is these are people that are pressured they are trafficked they are uh you know controlled by the the people that uh, sort of manage them and um it's a real problem in in the city there and so such an amazing accomplishment is what i wanted to say for you to be able to to um uh, make the purchase of sex illegal in israel and uh i just think it's incredible that you're working with all of these other areas as well to help uh you know educate and and um um uh, better uh, sort of position people to be able to deal with these issues kudos Thank you. Thank you so much. And and I want to say it was 10 years, uh, over 10 years of, of really hard work. And when we started, it wasn't even on general society's radar. It was just prostitution mm -hmm. always was, it always will be. Why should we care? And it took many media campaigns and, and just slowly, slowly changing society's attitude. And... Um, that was encourage, encouraging for us at the end of it because you see that progress can be made. So I want yes. to encourage your listeners that if there's something that they are working to change within their local society, don't give up. Don't give up. Like I said, it took us yeah. 10 years, over 10 years. And uh, but <laughs> thank God. Well, and I'll say this too. The other thing that I love about what we are able to do in coming alongside of ministries in Israel is that, you know, we've been able to to help uh, local organizations and even congregations who are, you know, dealing with this problem, with, with a lot of the symptoms and the fallout of this problem. But uh, so, you know, we are able to, to um, you know, alleviate some of the, the suffering that uh, that women who are trafficked are experiencing, help them when they get in trouble with, uh, you know, pregnancies and, and give them good counsel and advice, all of those kind of things. And yet in the background, you know, you guys were, were working at the root problem. And it's just so amazing to see how it all works together. Thank you. Yes, and uh, we do legally represent uh, some of the women as well. Uh, as you can imagine, if they were trafficked here, uh, they're most likely here without uh, visas, without passports. And so sometimes we go to bat for them and, and take that on as well. Hmm. Amazing. Uh, Lydia, what's another example of a, of a success that you can point to, uh, you know, recently through your work? Wow. So... Um, I'm trying to think it was in 2020, I believe, we took the testimonies of 52 Palestinians 
that had been abused uh, by the Palestinian Authority and by their own government. And we took those to uh, the International Criminal Court. And wow, what, what, it's heart wrenching to hear, to hear how they were abused, how they were betrayed. And, um, but yet, an honor to be able to take their stories and try mm -hmm. to make changes here in the Middle East. And I would never ever say that Israel is a utopia because it's not. Um, however, the biggest abuser of Palestinian human rights is their own governments. It is the Palestinian Authority mm -hmm. and it is Hamas. And because of these reports, um, and uh, actually lawsuits that we were able to file, um, the International Criminal Court has accepted them. We, we report on a very high level and they accepted the, these reports and um, are indeed in, do, conducting an investigation. So we are um, proud to be part of that. Uh, that's amazing. And I think people listening and watching might be surprised, you know, to hear that an organization called Jerusalem Institute of Justice um, uh, made up, uh, you know, a portion of your staff are Jewish. I do know that some are, are also Arab, but, uh, you know, some might be surprised to hear that you're advocating on behalf of Palestinians. Um, talk about why you do that. I know why you do that, but I want other people to hear. Um, very simply, and it's not a cliche for us, justice is not just for us. Um, ah. Yes, we really believe in Israel being a light to the world. Uh, we believe that, um, wow, it's our duty to fight for the rights of everyone. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it comes from a, a, a biblical understanding of yes. of what that is all about, you know, and, and from the character of God that, uh, you know, that we are to uh, to love mercy and uh, walk humbly and and that justice should be for everyone. And I think it's uh, just an incredible testament to the work that you do there at JIJ that uh, you're not only focused on, uh, you know, Jewish issues, Jewish problems. Israel is a diverse, rich culture. And uh, and even outside of, you know, Israel proper, uh, you are able to see all kinds of things that, uh, you know, that are that are happening in Gaza and the West Bank where uh, justice is not being served. And so it's amazing that you're bringing light to that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about something else that you do. And um, I think it's incredible that you uh, are a voice and have an official voice now uh, at the uh, the United Nations. And, and on behalf of Israel, you're able to speak to a lot of the inconsistencies, let's call them, mm -hmm. that uh, that tend to uh, that tend to happen there. Yes, it was, uh, a, again, a huge honor that um, JIJ was given the special consultative status at uh, the United Nations. And it really is a testament to our work for human rights as a whole, not, as you said, not just Jewish issues, not just Israeli issues, but really fighting for human rights in the Middle East. And um, yeah, it was that was an honor that was uh, given to us last July. And uh, we are looking forward to, we do have someone, a, a liaison working for us, who is helping us, as you can imagine, it's a, it's a very cumbersome um, organization and uh, the UN is and navigating and finding out exactly how to influence, where to make your stand. And uh, timing is everything. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to uh, 
uh, have a voice there. Yeah. There are, uh, you know, many disparaging things that I could say <laughs> about the United Nations, yes. but I'm going to choose to focus on the positive yes. of uh, what this means, because I, I really do feel mm -hmm. that uh, this is an incredible and amazing opportunity that uh, that you guys have at GIJ. And uh, we pray uh, almost every day, whenever we think about this, we pray that you will have favor there and that your voice will be heard and uh, that you'll be able to raise important issues because uh, there tends to be uh, a lot of unfairness when it comes to you know the UN and, and how Israel is viewed yes. if you're just looking at the number of resolutions that uh, you know that even mention Israel are so disproportionate to any other any other member any other nation in the world it's just kind of crazy but um, we'll just maybe just leave that there uh, tell me a little bit you know we are able to help with uh, as we mentioned earlier some of the humanitarian work that you do, especially among Holocaust survivors. Uh, why is this such an important um, justice issue in Israel today? Wow. Uh, you can imagine, I think, what these very, very precious people have survived. They are victorious and everything that they've been yeah. through, the and it's important for JIJ. We say we do it for ourselves, you know, and um, uh -huh. it helps us to bless them. And we just uh, yesterday had a big event uh, for Purim with costumes and um, many Holocaust survivors are, are lonely and JIJ comes alongside and and First Century Foundations. Uh, together, we provide events for them. It gets them out of the house. It gets them, brings them fellowship and community. And uh, we share food. We give gift certificates. We help provide some of their basic needs. And um, it, it's amazing. It's amazing to see them dance and rejoice. And in spite of everything that they've gone through, they're here. They are in Israel. They are in the homeland for the Jewish people. And it's, it's just amazing. Really, it's amazing. Well, we've been involved in uh, a couple of those events. And I would also sort of echo those remarks. It is amazing and uh great to see them smile to see them laugh and um, we just uh, have loved our interaction with uh, each and every one of them and you know i think for people watching and listening you know they wonder maybe why in a nation as uh, um, prosperous let's say as israel that um there would even sort of be a need to help Holocaust survivors. And and you can correct me if I say something out of line, but, uh, you know, I've always just kind of felt like there is so much pressure on the uh, Israeli economy from a, from a defense perspective and, and other things that social programs don't always bridge the gap the way that they need to in order to give these folks, especially these older folks who live on their own, you know, all that they need to, to kind of make ends meet. And that's why it's always been such a joy for us to know that through organizations like JIJ and some other congregations that we work with, you know, that we can help provide things like gift cards for, you know, groceries and, yeah. and uh, necessities and, and things like that so that uh, they can have all that they need and, and be able to, uh, you know, to exist uh, like everyone else. Exactly. It, it, exactly right, Jeff. Um, yes, there is a lot of pressure here in Israel regarding the defense. And, and you're right, sometimes people fall through the cracks, and it is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. um, but it 
also an opportunity, an opportunity for us to come alongside together and uh, really bring joy and assistance that is necessary. Yeah. And events like this uh, are great for their mental health as well. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of these precious people during COVID, for example, and the lockdowns and everything that occurred. Uh, it must have been just terrible for them not to be able to to be involved in some of these events. Mm -hmm. It really was. And uh, in fact, last year for Purim, I'm, I'm recalling, we weren't able to gather together. So we, a whole bunch of us, we took uh, gift baskets with gift cards and, and food necessities to their homes and uh, distributed along with um, Oz, Ozne Haman, you know, the uh, Haman Tashin, we call them, uh, special cookies to, to celebrate Purim and, and candies. And right. they were so happy and we couldn't go in, we wore masks, but um, we were able to give the gifts and they were very, very happy to receive them. So yesterday to gather together in person was really special. Oh, that's amazing. Wish I could have been there. Yes. I hope you guys got video. We did. And we'll be sending it to you. Well, Lydia, we maybe just talk a little bit more about uh, your advocacy work there within the country. And uh, I do know that you have opportunity to represent uh, groups from religions other than Judaism and, and help to protect their rights. Talk about an example of one of those where, uh, you know, you were able to uh, help on their behalf. Wow, Jeff, thank you for the opportunity to speak about this because it's it's very close to our hearts and uh, again, why we were founded. Um, yes, I can tell you of, of one of the best examples uh, has to do with property tax in Israel. It's called Arnona here. And the municipalities, so under the law, all houses of worship. What the law says was all houses of worship are to receive a property tax exemption. However, the, okay. the municipalities uh, uh, were only applying it to Jewish houses of prayer, uh, Jewish houses of worship. That's not equality under the law. That's not legal. So we really, it was a Supreme Court that we won and it was very exciting for us. And we know that it is saving congregations, churches, uh, hundreds of thousands of shekels a year. Because now when you go, uh, the municipality has to honor that and, and give that same property tax exemption that it gives for a synagogue, it now has to give to a church. And um, that's not always comfortable uh for the clerks mm -hmm. and many times they do not know the law so they still refuse to give it and then jij gets called and we get to step in again and say now wait a minute right equality under the law enforcement of israel's democracy you know um and yeah we win <laughs> So we're we're so excited to <laughs> be good. able to assist the churches in this way and uh, throughout Israel. It's throughout Israel. And that means more money for them to put back into their programs. And um, we're excited. Now, Lydia, I know that uh, sometimes there are, uh, you know, issues that can, can arise with immigration where advocacy is needed. Can you give us an example of, of how JIJ uh, is able to help in a situation like that? Sure. Uh, sometimes it's immigration. Many times uh, we're finding recently it's with what we call family reunification. So a lot of times a, um, okay. an Israeli citizen, whether he be Jewish or Arab Christian, um, they marry someone from abroad and the Ministry of Interior does not always cooperate and, and give the rights that they should to the foreign spouse. Um, an example I can give you is uh, there's an Arab Christian pastor that we know very well, and he came to us because 
wow, I don't know, 10 years, over 10 years, he had married someone, a foreigner, and wow. uh, 10 years, she went without her rights. And there is a process, just like in the US, just like in Canada, there is a, a set process. And um, you receive uh, different levels of residency. And um, yeah, they were just denying her rights completely, which meant over 10 years, she had no mm. medical care. She couldn't work. She had no social rights. So it was wow. a huge burden on them. And um, yeah, our attorneys were able to really rectify that situation, cut through the red tape and uh, assist. And now uh, the wife, um, she has her rights too. And um, yes. And so that's, it's our privilege to be able to come alongside and help, particularly young married couples. Um, again, an Israeli citizen, foreign spouse, and just to ensure that they right. get the rights that they are entitled to. That's incredible. And uh, it must make you very happy when you can see those kind of things come to uh, to fruition and uh, um, people able to carry on life the way that they should be able to carry on life. Yes. I think that's uh, an incredible part of the work that you do. Uh, Lydia, it's been great to have you with us today. And and I want to, you know, just maybe finish with this last question, because I I know you. Uh, I know how happy it makes you to be able to do the work that you do. And what a great team that you have there at JIJ. Every time we go in, they're always happy. They're smiling. They're, they're happy to see us. And uh, it, it feels like a great place uh, to work and like a place where um, where people feel that they're they're really accomplishing something good. And so uh, just talk to us a little bit before we're finished here about, um, you know, why you do what you do and how it, it reflects who you are as a person and what you believe. Wow. Uh, passion for justice. I think everybody who works here at Jerusalem Institute of Justice, that is at the core, at the heart of what we do. And we really do stand up for the rights of those who can't speak for themselves. They, they don't know where to go. They don't know where to turn. Yeah. They, which avenue to take. Many times they're, it sounds trite, downtrodden, but they're so abused and disillusioned and battered by various systems. And when they come to us and we're able to help them and restore their lives and give them yeah. um, dignity back, whether it's the Holocaust survivors or those that were caught in prostitution and, and have escaped or, um, you know, those trying to just live here to receive their rights, their legal rights because of their faith. It's um, all of us. And, and if you, uh, talk to any of our team, you will hear that passion. You will hear that, that fire um, yeah. to serve. And I have to say that, uh, brag about our leader, uh, Flavia Sivald, our CEO. And one of the, the culture here that we cultivate is one of servanthood and servant leadership from the, mm -hmm. from the, the bottom up, you know, and or from the top down however you want to see it but we see it flavia and i as um we want to push others forward and um, uh, yeah yeah that's who we are and that's what we're about <laughs> well i will also say this uh you know there there is um a much needed emphasis more needed emphasis every day um on uh, empowering women and it's amazing to see such a great organization led by two strong women but also uh that that um, hires other women into uh, you guys have an amazing group there and i know you're not exclusively uh you know ladies but uh i think you know international women's day just passed here a few weeks ago and uh uh, it was amazing to see your your photo, your post on Instagram, and and uh, I just want to say that, uh, you know, if you're 
Yeah, if you're listening, watching, this is a great example of a, of a female led organization that is doing some amazing work in uh, in the area of, of justice in the land of Israel. So uh, thanks for all the work that you do. And we just appreciate it so much. Um, Lydia, it's been great to have you with us. We always look forward to uh, hanging out with you when we're in Israel. I'm a little Thank sad you that you're not going to be there when we're there uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, you mentioned Flavia, and I'll just say for those watching and listening, we're trying to arrange something where we can get together with Flavia, maybe even uh, in Israel and um, do a bit of a, an interview and, and maybe even a podcast about justice, biblical justice, and sort of the heart of where all of this comes from. And uh, so uh, just kind of watch for that, listen for that. It'll be, uh, it'll be a great interview as well. Lydia, thanks, thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. First Century Foundations is committed to helping those in Israel who are most in need. And this is possible because of people like you. Your donations are supporting the Jerusalem Institute of Justice, who care for some of the most vulnerable in the land, especially aging Holocaust survivors. By spending quality time with them, engaging them through activities, and providing them with food and medication, the Jerusalem Institute of Justice and First Century Foundations together are making a real difference in the lives of people who have experienced so much suffering. People like us who lost everything, and live with the pain to have people that help us a little bit. We're very grateful. Call or write today and receive our bi-monthly free Israel Prayer Watch to help you stay up to date and pray for all of the ministries we support in Israel. Partner with us for just $30 a month or more. Your gifts are making a difference in Israel today.